Bonjour everyone. A couple of days ago, I released a video called 8.5 Update Preview, which was basically a review of what's coming in the next update. And basically, I did it as soon as the test server was on to be among the first to release the video for views, etc. You know how YouTube works. But it seems like I completely forgot a huge part of this update and probably the biggest part simply because it's game changing and it's finally going to give free to play players the feeling that World of Tank Blitz is back at being free to play. Because in my video, I talk about the little nerf and buff that are occurring during the 8.5 update. As you can see, there is the AMX 5100, there is also the Tiger 2, T32 and Pershing. But it seems like the list of those tanks that are getting buffed and keep in mind that all of them are all tech trees, is much larger. Sorry for the look of the presentation, but if I showed you the original file, I would get some people in trouble. So basically, let's start with the Russian accuracy getting increased, especially on the IS-3, IS-5 and Objective 5 to you, because their aim time is reduced to 3.1 seconds. It's going to make them more accurate, and I gotta be honest, I truly don't understand why Wargaming is buffing the Object 5 to you. The tank is already a really great performer on the battlefield, so there was no point. At least IS-3 and IS-5, I can understand it because those tanks are not that played but the object to vibe to you i don't know then the su 130 hit point buff plus 240 it's not going to make a huge difference it will probably allow you to sustain a little bit more on the battlefield but that's it plus a little traverse speed buff from 28 degrees to 30 per second the su 101 then the nerve they nerf the mobility uh I don't know. Uh, I truly don't have a clue why Wargaming would do such a thing because the tank is not known uh, for its openness. It's just a regular tank that nobody plays, so why not? Then we have the Crystal K, which gets a buff on its penetration with both AP and APCR, and all those premiums, the XP, the T28 Defender, TS5, and T54 E2, that will see their Travis speed buffed as well. Same for the Object 25 to you. Why did they buff the T54 E2, which is already one of the greatest performers at tier 8? I don't have a clue. Let's keep going with the tier 5 now, the M4 A3 E2, a buff reload from 7 seconds to 6, so 1 second decreased, and a view range that goes from 230 meters to 240. So, is it going to make this tank relevant? I don't think so, because it's already rare to see it on the battlefield, and the main problem of it is more the mobility rather than its mighty gun. Now the Chief 2095, interesting buff, because it goes from 6.9 seconds of reload to 6 seconds only, which is going to increase a lot the DPM to nearly 2.7k. It's just insane, and I don't know if it's going to be enough to make the tank relevant again, but I guess it would be the case. On top of that, they buff a little bit the penetration to 215 millimeters, so just 3 millimeters of difference, which is not going to do that much. Funny one about the collectible, the Churchill gun carrier that was once a tech tree tank, buff the top speed to 30 km per hour and also buff the traverse speed. I truly don't know why they did that, but that's always welcome because that tank was kind of sluggish on the battlefield in my opinion, and now it's probably going to make a whole difference between the Dreadnought, the Battle Pass tank and the Churchill. The Hori Tier 1, the Tier 8 Japanese Tank Destroyer, is going to see a buff on its hit points plus 150 and its weight will increase by 2.5 tons, so maybe the mobility will be kind of decreased. And now for the two last big boys that are Tech 3, there is the VK4202A, 4502A, sorry, that sees a huge armor buff. Just take a look at that. The hull is going from 125 millimeters to 160. This will make it as strong as a Tiger 2, for example. The hull sides and the turret are going to be buffed as well on the armor profile, which is probably going to make the VK4502A more relevant than the Tiger 2, simply because it will be a Tiger 2 with a much better mobility. So I'm definitely looking forward for this one. But the most important, in my opinion, is the TVP. VTU because the armor hull is going from 90 millimeters to 150 still you are going to get penetrated easily but the turret armor goes from 95 millimeters to 200 here this tank is definitely going to be one, one of the greatest at tier 8 in all down and this is just insane on top of that, they buff the aim time of the top gun by going from 2.3 to 1.7. So truly, this is going to be a mix between a T-34-3 and a Pershing. You have the armor and the aim time of the T-34-3 turret 
and the gun depression of the Pershing, and plus on top of that, the mighty mobility of the TVP VTU, which was already among the greatest. Among all those changes, you might have seen that, yes, there are a lot of premiums that got buffed out of nowhere and for necessarily not a good reason, t 42 and Object 252 especially. But on top of that, we also had two tanks that didn't get just a little buff. They got a huge buff, the VK and the TVP VTU. And this gives me hope because in this game, you got to be optimistic if you want to see the bright side. And here I am, simply because Wargaming did not only buff a couple of parts of each of those tanks, and especially the VTU. No, they took the tank, they made it completely wild, completely broken, because that's what seems to happen. Maybe not broken, it's over exaggerated, but at least a very good tank, and they are releasing it at such. And it's gonna make first the grind much pleasant, much more pleasant for your uh, for your players as a company. But on top of that, it's also gonna increase the chances of it being enriched and of people playing it. And I kind of love how Wargaming is taking into consideration the statistics because the VK and the TVP VTU are among the least played tanks at tier 8. And they are just taking both tanks and saying, yeah, you know what, let's make something really, really good out of them for people to love them back. And I truly hope it's going to help those tanks to be... Uh, among the greatest tanks on the battlefield even if from time to time you could doubt of it because usually tech 3 tanks and especially tier 8 tech 3 tanks you just grind with them and after you sell them to get the tier 9. Now of course it also gives hope on the long future of World of Tank Blitz because if they are willing to buff such tanks and knowing that a lot of premiums are coming at tier 8 and pretty much uh, two or three premiums per month if Wargaming knows that people tend to play only premiums at tier 8 simply because those tanks are the best and they want to make the tech trees relevant, maybe that at one point we will be able to see something like tech tree tanks being better than uh, premiums once again, like it was the case in the good old days. But if this happens, it's probably going to take one, two... Maybe even three years, let's say, or maybe wait for a tank company to be released for you need to actually do something about that. We'll have to wait, we'll have to see. And waiting for that, truly guys, you want to buy back the TVP VTU and the VK4502A because both tanks are probably going to be wild in the 8.5 update. Now, on a rebel mention to the tank I did not talk about in this video because we know for sure that more buffs are coming on tech trees, but we don't have access to the list yet and I did not want it to wait too much time before releasing that video. So, we'll have to see, we'll have to see, we'll wait for the patch note and see what works gaming prepared for us hopefully you enjoy guys if that's the case feel free to subscribe like and share and personally i'm gonna see you soon for a new video bye